Let's continue the work on our get input program by this time working with a loop. Let's say that the requirements are we need to enter three names, the ages for each of those names, and the school for each of those names. We need to do something over and over. In other words, we need to repeat or use a loop. I could just copy and paste the, the lines of code I've used to get the one person and paste them and paste again. This is inefficient programming. If you do this in your programs in school, you're going to be docked points. Instead, we need to create a loop. A for loop is a loop used when you know the number of times to do something. You need to create a variable that keeps track of how many times you are doing the loop. That variable can be an integer variable. I'll create a variable called int I count. And now I want to create a loop that does something for a certain number of times. We'll say we want to do it three times. We use a structure called the for loop. Here's the syntax for it. For parentheses, some variable name, where do you want it to start? We've said we're going to use the variable called I count, which is an integer variable. We are going to initialize it to zero. In other words, we're starting at zero semicolon. There are three parts to a for loop. The variable initiate initialization. The second part is what keeps you in the loop. As long as I count is less than three, we'll keep doing a loop. The first time through, I count is equal to zero. Is zero less than three? Yes or true. So it drops into the loop. Semicolon. The third part of the for loop is the maintenance of the counter. In other words, you are responsible for increasing that counter. The first time through, I count is zero. The second time through, I count can be one. So you can say I count equals I count plus one. Three parts, once again, the variable initialization. What keeps you in the loop? How do you increment the counter? The for loop will look for only one statement. So if you want more than one statement as part of the for loop, you need to put it in a block of code. We use the curly brace to represent blocks of code. All of this code inside of the for loop should be indented. So you can highlight that code and just press the tab key. That will indent it. Let's run this code and see how it works. When we run it, it says enter the name. I'll enter the first name, Mickey. The age, 10. The school, Disney. The name was Mickey, the age was 10. And then if you notice, once again, we had a problem because it jumped over the name. Is it waiting for the name? Let's try Donald, enter looks fine. Be aware that in your console area, sometimes, depending on your output, it can be confusing. You need to make sure that your output is understandable to the end user. We will want to go back and add a blank line in between these two lines to try to make it more readable to the end user. The age for Donald? 20. The school? Donald also went to Disney. The last character's name, we will say, will be Roger Rabbit. We'll say that Roger is 25, since he was married to Jessica, and that he went to Toontown. Enter. The program has completed. We don't know the program is completed, so maybe once again, you need to add some type of display to let the user know the loop is done. Let's go do that. So remember, the first thing we wanted to do was add a blank line. System dot out dot print line, double quotes. That will now do a blank line. And then after our loop, so that's outside of the curly brace, let's type in system dot out dot print line, and we'll display a comment, please, again. 
semicolon. Now let's run it and see how it looks. Enter the name. This time we'll use Spanky. He was 10 and he went to the rascal. The next name, Darla. Darla was also 10. She is also a rascal. And the last name will be Pluto. Pluto will be 20 and he went to dog obedience if Pluto is a dog. And then if you notice, the output was a lot more readable and we even displayed, please come again. So once again, the for loop has three parts to it. The first part, the variable initialization. Where do you want to count? Where do you want to start from? The second part, how long do you want to stay in the loop? And the third part, how do you want to control the counter for that loop?